Welcome to the Hey Docs podcast with your host, Jill Allen. Today, I am joined by Dr. Michael Capagna from Practice Ascend. Michael is here to discuss the importance of follow-ups in busy practices, how Practice Ascend can help make these tasks more manageable, and the role of AI and automation in maintaining a personal touch with patients. We'll explore the future of AI in orthodontics and how practices can leverage these innovations at different stages of their life cycle. Let's get into it. Hey docs, when it comes to marketing, I keep hearing that you're frustrated and that you don't know what you're paying for or even if your marketing efforts are working. Are you wondering what your next marketing move should be? I would suggest you contact Mary Kay Miller and her team at Kaleidoscope. With their free digital marketing audit, you will get answers and solutions to your biggest marketing questions. Go to contactkl.com to request your free digital marketing audit today. When it comes to websites, SEO, and digital advertising, you don't know what you don't know till you know. Find out what you don't know today. That's contactkl.com. All righty, Mike, I am so excited to have you on Hey Docs. This is going to be a great episode. Thanks for being here. And thank you so much for having me. It's exciting to be here. This is like my first ever official podcast and I've been on. So this is exciting for me as well. So thank you so much. Yes, I will take it easy on you. This is going to be just a fun 45 minutes here. So one of the things I like to do when I have guests on the show is first just have them start off telling the audience a little bit about yourself and the company Practice Ascend. And you're an orthodontist, but yeah, we're talking about a totally different company that helps our industry. So I, I want you to bring all of that in and talk to our audience about that a little bit. Yeah, sure. So just a little brief summary about me. I live on Long Island. I grew up here. My wife and I actually met in residency, so we're both orthodontist. And now we both live on Long Island. We have two little kids two little boys, a three-year-old and a two-month-old. And we actually practiced together along with my dad, who actually started the practice 38 years ago. Yeah, no, it's actually great. And so basically, I bought into the practice. And when I got there, it's a great practice and everything like that. So the way Practice Ascent came about was over time, we weren't really following up with patients. And we wanted to establish a way to have a systematic Mm follow-up for patients who don't start right away. They believe they need to think about it and things like that. And we went through a few iterations of things. The first thing we did with our treatment court coordinator and office manager was we had a notebook that did not last very long (laughs) because I don't like paper and that just seemed like a, it could get lost. And then the next thing we did, which is worked well, but not, it was like clunky. There was no automation was a a Google spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. So it was all color coordinated. To be honest, the only person who could decipher it was our treatment coordinator. So um, it wasn't really, (laughs) it was good. We were just really looking for a better, simpler way to make those follow-ups easier, more automatic and connect our front desk where the whole patient lead starts all the way through to them starting. Yeah. And so I was actually talking with one of my college roommates, Tushar, who is part of the company. And his background is very different than mine. He is a business guy, was in finance. He went to Wharton for his MBA. And he's worked in the technology like sector for, I don't even know, 10 years now. Mm-hmm. And so he was, oh, yeah, that's like an interesting problem. And he's like, I think we could solve this. And that's just how this was born. And that's how the whole thing started. And so here we are. Yeah, Uh, I I love that. And one of my one of my most favorite things is when I talk to doctors who who have seen a need in our industry and said, I think I can I think I can find a way to do this better. And I think there's just been some really great businesses that have been born out of problems yeah. that we have in our own practices. And I think you hit on this and I feel as we are moving along in our industry 2024, 25 and continuing, we're really seeing the importance of paying attention to our I'm going to say contact to contract 
component of our practice. And for years and years, we were just so focused on just what's our conversion and our follow-up. And that that was kind of, it was a very, I think, two-dimensional, one-dimensional, like just type of a system. And our softwares have never really done a great job at helping us through that. (laughs) No, No, yeah, that... That is very true. Yes. No. And when we think about that and when you were problem solving through this and thinking, okay, there's this need that we have in our practice that we know that we're spending all this money to get patients in the door. What's actually happening with the follow-up? And there's, it's not only just like, how are we tracking it, but what's the time that it takes for sometimes some of my top paid employees to be filling out spreadsheets and doing all of the, this, that, and the other. I'm wondering if you can just talk about that in in regard to just what that looks like and that why behind what we need to be doing and how Practice Ascend is helping. Yeah. Like you said, like the follow-ups are very important to do, right? So mm-hmm. um, obviously there's busy practices and sometimes that can get lost right? Mm-hmm. Because it's like, there's so many things going on. Generally, the, we have our treatment coordinator following up and they're always busy because all day, hopefully they're seeing new patients and they're doing all these things. And so it's, we really wanted to make that process really simple um, because we've just found that patients do come in and it's, you got to make it as easy as possible for them to get started. And sometimes yeah. it's a matter of they're busy. I just... We just put braces on a, a kid and he's, the guy has seven kids, right? Him and his wife, they have seven kids. And yeah, like you think like braces are super important, but when you have seven kids, it's, oh, I forgot. And so people like really appreciate the follow-up. Um, a lot of within practice of send, you could do custom follow-up. So there's all these things where patients will come in and they'll say, it's November. Or can you call me back? And can I want to get started, but not until January. I have flex money redoing. And you want to be able to make it convenient for patients. So it's really important to do those things. And it really does help. I mean, mm-hmm. patients appreciate it too. It's not about being like pushy, right? It's about just helping guide them and helping them along because their lives are busy. They're not just thinking about the orthodontists all the time and, oh, I got to get back in there. It's, you know, they might get that flex money and forget to call you back. And we find that a lot with adult patients too, because they're yes. busy and it's, they wanted to do it. That's why they came to you. But they were waiting. Insurance has changed in January. Some people want to wait till the summer and they don't want to book right now because they're like, I don't Mm -hmm. know what I'm doing this summer. We're looking to plan a vacation. So make it easy. You know, I I know we always want to schedule before someone leaves and I totally get that. Or do you want to do same day starts? But some people just you just need to follow up with them. That's like they want to go. They're not sure what they're doing. And it's patients really appreciate it when you're just like, oh, absolutely. Like, I'll follow up with you. I know we're going to talk about practice ascend in a little bit, like in more detail, but that's what this like system allows. And it just makes it really easy to keep track of all those things. And it's important. And we've just seen conversion goes up because you're just helping them along. And with depending on what you're doing with practice ascend, or if you're running Google ads, the follow-up is even more important if, mm-hmm. with those patients, which yep. I think pretty much everyone listening to your podcast knows at this point that yeah. they require a little bit more work to get them in but it is important to do and yeah the why is it is starting the patients but it's also about making their lives easier and yeah just making it a better experience for them yeah and and you said something about our treatment coordinators i truly believe that <clears throat> most of our treatment coordinators i'm going to say 95 percent of them out there if they're in it and they love the job that they're in they want those starts. They oh, want, they, yeah. they are sales gals and girls out there and uh, gals and, and men as well out there. And they, they want that satisfaction of somebody saying yes. And I can tell you from being a treatment coordinator for many years while I was working in, in the practices, there was n- like the best high was when you had somebody that like six months later, they're like, okay, I'm ready to start. And you're like, yes, like all of that follow up paid off. But you know, what I love about practice ascended, I know we're going to get into this. And and you said, this is they're busy. 
And when I can think about it, when I was in a practice, it was a very busy practice. And I was right. from the minute I walked in until the half hour after 45 minutes after the last patient left, I was yeah. hustling. Yeah. So then you think about, okay, now I got to, where do I find the time in my day? If my time and my skills are best spent selling, right? Being right. in front of the patients, how do I prioritize? How do I follow up? And it's not that I don't want to do it. I'm just, there's only so many hours in a day. And I'm wondering that that kind of leads me into where we are seeing more and more systems out there that are out there to help us. But how do we see practice ascend or companies like yours that are helping manage, you know, those tasks for us? Can you jump in and especially from that AI component, because gosh, we could not be in a better time where yeah. we've got technology that's just busting to, and if we can just harness it, we can just really do so much with it. Yeah. So the, when, whenever we're looking at AI, at least with us, we want to make sure it's like our whole goal with AI, because a lot of people and feel that, oh, if you're using like things that are automatic, it loses like that personal touch. Mm -hmm. The way we think about AI is not so much to us, it actually increases the personal touch because what we do is try to automate those mundane tasks that really take away from you being able to interact with people and your front desk mm -hmm. to interact with people and everything like that. Just like examples of like automation within practices and just a few just like simple ones is the way the system works it's a simple drag and drop tile follow-up when you when a patient decides that they want to start whether it's that day or something automatically on the back end they get a generated google review right so you don't have to do anything you drag it there so that automation you don't have to like copy and paste the link send a text to them it automatically texts them from the system that link. And so not only that, but let's just say they don't do it. A lot of people don't do it right away. It automatically sends it again. And this is all customizable at certain time periods. And we like to do it then because that they've decided to start treatment with you. So presumably that they like you. So that's one thing in terms of like automation and like using AI within practice ascend. The other thing is something like we at practice ascend, we have built in something called call connect which is really important, especially if you're running Google ads, because what that does is when somebody puts a Google ad in, the software itself on the back end actually calls your front desk automatically. So the mm -hmm. phone rings, the front desk picks up and it says, we have a patient that's trying to schedule with you. Are you available? And that connects you right away. Within 30 seconds, you're calling that patient. And it's also automatically generated into practice to send the patient's name, phone number, and email. So you're calling them right away. And we know just from tons of marketing data that people who put in for a Google ad submission, you really, the quicker you get to them and call yeah. them, the better. Yeah. There's also without the front desk doing anything. So they're going to get that call connect. Plus the person is going to get an automatic email and text message through practice ascend so it's all in practice ascend let's just say you call and it's somebody who a lot of people nowadays they don't want to pick up the phone mm -hmm. right so they mm -hmm. want to text so they got the text they may text you in practice ascend and you could do it that way mm -hmm. but that text and email is all automatic right. the calling of to the office is automatic so it makes it easier for your front desk frees up time and it also connects you to the patient quicker which we know is really important with Google ads. And it does the same thing if they put it a request in on your website. The automation and the AI stuff, it's really great, but we, we don't want to overdo it where now it's so complicated that where it's like making it, taking more time, if that sure. makes sense. We really try to use AI where it makes sense and not use it just to use it. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And you're really talking about <clears throat> the two sides of it, because there's the, like I said, that contact to making it into the new patient exam and just what that is doing for freeing up our front desk and allowing that front desk to know, okay, if, if I'm picking up the phone and I'm hearing that, okay, there's a new patient on the line, I can put on my smile face and be energetic <laughs> yeah. and ready yes. to go. It does alert you. Yes. <laughs> and of course, all the front desk is always doing that no matter what. But 
having a little hint that it's that it is an, <laughs> indeed a new patient probably does help sometimes. Well, At least it's a yes, yeah. So, I, I've uh, I've got to believe it does because there are just times where you're busy and just that one little prompt to be like, okay, all right, this is a new patient. All right, go time. And then the secondary part of it, <laughs> excuse me, for the treatment coordinator in just that that follow up and and I, and just being able to say, okay, they're still important to me. It's still important to me that I'm following up with them. But like you said, there's so many situations where sometimes our patients aren't starting not because they just can't make a decision. Maybe they've got to go follow up with the dentist or maybe they, yeah. like you said, I, I want to get started, but I need a reminder at the end of the year because I want to use my health spending. Right. I can remember doing a lot of those Excel sheets where you're like, searching back up through for the, okay, which month yes. was it that I need yep. to follow up and it, just the brain power that it took. And the, and I, the I time, just, yeah. yes, the time. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's <laughs> one of the things that makes it nice once on the treatment coordinator side. So just to quickly just go through like practice the send, just so it, this makes sense as we're talking about it. When a new patient, let's just say they call the office, it's really easy. You just add them into the system. It's name, telephone number, and email. Mm -hmm. And it, depending if you have one office or multiple offices, what the front, all the front desk has to do, if it, this is just a patient calling, not a Google ad, they just drag it into the column for consult scheduled. And you could have multiple offices. And so like it could go into that and that's all customizable. And once it goes into consult scheduled, then it goes into the treatment coordinator's practice view. to send view. Yep. And so when that patient comes in, if they start, that's simple, right? You just, that's the easiest thing. But if they have to see a dentist flex spending, you can do a custom follow-up, right? Are you ready to revolutionize your orthodontic practice and retainer program? Then I suggest you reach out to Retainers for Life. It's like Amazon for retainers, convenient and efficient. Having Retainers for Life in your practice means patients can easily order retainer replacements online with direct delivery to their mailbox. No more emergency appointments, waiting, or strain on your practice. It eliminates the hassle of managing retainers while adding a steady income stream and even equips you with marketing tools to boost your success. Ready to get started? Go to www.afterorthorevenue.com forward slash heydocs.html and mention our code R-F-L-H-E-Y-D-O-C-X. That's R-E-F-L-H-E-Y-D-O-C-S to receive $2,000 off your onboarding fee. With Retainers for Life, you can say goodbye to retainer headaches and hello to effortless efficiency and extra revenue. Hey docs, let's talk about Smile Suite because it's not just another scheduling system. It's a game changer in the world of new patient management. And as a proud Smile Suite partner, I've witnessed the incredible impact it has on practices of all sizes. Smile Suite means your new patient calls and web leads are expertly handled seven days a week, even during nights and weekends. And they offer top-notch customizable presentation software and seamless post-consultation follow-up. It's like having a secret weapon for your practice's success. Curious? Dive into the revolution at GetSmileSuite.com. And don't forget to mention hey Docs to unlock some extra goodies. Elevate your practice with Smile Suite because every smile deserves a suite of excellence. So now you put it there, you're like, they want to start in January. You just put in the date, almost like a recall. Yep. It goes, it disappears, the tile disappears on January 1st. When you come in the morning, there's an automatic email sent with who the you need to call that day. And there's an automatic task list in practice to send. So you could see who you need to call that day. Oh, I love so that. So it makes it 
really easy as opposed to which is what our jamie our treatment coordinator and she loved her spreadsheet so if she ever listens to this jamie i love your spreadsheet too it was great her heart but, uh, soul blood and sweat went into that yeah <laughs> that's, that's, that's she really, really liked it but <laughs> she likes practice to send more because it's just so much easier because she would have yeah. to go back just like you said and be and it just takes time and things can get missed right but if it's just automatically there it also is just a cleaner thing to look at it's like mm-hmm. s- literally just less brain power to look at it's gone until it needs to be done again and then it pops up and then you follow up with the patient so you could do custom follow-ups like that or if the person just is i want to go home and think about it you can do your like standard follow-up as the treatment coordinator and whatever that is like one week three week five week what that's all customizable depending on what you want to do and so it makes it very easy to like, because mm-hmm. you don't have to, you just drag it over and you just get a list that day. And you give those a call when you have a chance and you're busy, right? So you don't want to be going through the spreadsheet, like frantically trying to figure out like, okay, who was I supposed to call today? It's right there. Yes. It's, so it's not, it's just there and it's easy. Yeah. I'd love that. And again, coming from a spreadsheet person, a gal that used yeah. to do that. I yeah. think that this is so nice. And I have seen the program and I really love the visit visibility component of it. It's just, it just makes sense. It's just an easy, instead of, again, just this spreadsheet of data and all these yeah. columns of all of these and, things. And that was the goal. Like when I was working with Tushar on this, I'm like, this has to be simple because not everyone is technologically savvy. So this can't be so complicated that you can't use it. And I will tell you, it was faster to, it took 25 minutes to train all of our front desk. Wow. And they have very different levels of technical Mm -hmm. ability. It was faster than training them to use Gmail. Wow. I'm not even kidding. So it was faster than training. I'm not saying that it's better than any Google products. I'm just saying it was, (laughs) I still have to help some of them with Gmail especially with the email threads. Yeah. For some reason that still gets confusing. So it's the whole goal was to make it simple. Sure. And so, yeah, the follow-up for the treatment coordinators and then the follow-up for the Google ads are important. Like you may call, so the front desk, but if they call, okay, that's great. You just drag it into the console column. But if you get a Google ad, somebody coming in from a Google ad, what's the follow-up there? Exactly. This was another reason why we actually... <laughs> Besides the following up with patients, the follow up with people with through Google ads was something that, you know, I get it like you're running a Google ad. And if you just get an email and you call them once, one, you're not calling them right away. So that's why the call connect is important. But they might not answer. They might not text and they might not email. So the front desk also has a follow up column, which is customizable, where you drag and just drag it across. And then the next day, they that patient will get a text and an email. Or whenever the follow-up is two days, whatever you want to do. We do one day, three day with Google Mm -hmm. ads. So Mm -hmm. that's a little more frequent. And the front desk gets a task list of who to call. So you just call them back. And so that has been very helpful because you don't just call them once and that's it. And, And then once they schedule, they get brought through. Same thing to the console column, but it's the Google ad link, what they clicked on is tracked throughout the software. So yeah. that patient starts, our, the software automatically calculates, like if, in other words, there's the data of which ads are working and which ads are not. Are mm-hmm. your ad dollars actually doing something or are you just doing Google ads, getting an email, calling them once, not following up and just don't do Google ads then. It's, yeah. If you can't really see what's working, And sometimes it's not what you think. But one of the practices that we work with, we were spending a decent amount. They were spending a decent amount of money on Invisalign, right? They were Mm -hmm. doing a lot of Google ads with Invisalign, which like makes sense, right? That's a big one. And we actually found that the braces ads were better and more profitable. So we shifted money to braces, which I I know clear liners are all the rage, but I guess some people still like traditional braces. And, but you don't know that unless you have that data. Mm -hmm. When we run Google ads, like we could do it for you, but we try to make this as simple as possible. Some people really like who's running their Google ads. Mm -hmm. So we can work with anybody. Like we could just implement our system. We don't even need to, and get that data for the people who run your Google ads, if you want to do that. Um, That has been 
incredibly helpful. That follow up with Google ads patients has been like, that is one of the biggest things that I say is so important to do, especially with those people. So it, it works really nicely. Yeah. Yeah. And gets me thinking about, we're completing the circle here. Not only I'm sure doing this with just our ad spend and there is, gosh, there's just a whole episode that could be just really talking about the the money we spend on ads and the follow-up and how we track it and all of that. The other thing I'm thinking about, an area that we don't talk a lot about, but I think practice is in can really help us too, is what about those cold leads? Yes, they are absolutely. still cold leads. And this is just an area that I think our industry is just barely pulling the curtains back on right now. Uh, we're, I... we're just starting to go, ah, drip campaigns, huh? We could be marketing to all of these yeah. people that have been in yeah. our practice for X amount of time that maybe weren't interested, but could be interested. So I'm wondering yeah. if you can talk to us a little bit about that too. Yes. So that is, so I know we've been talking a lot about the follow-ups and that is a big part of the software, but, um, yeah, so basically once at some point when the person goes patient, new patient comes in, there is a point where you've tried to contact them <laughs> and it's just not happening. There's three columns that they can go in. And so there's the column if they started and then there's two other columns. One is if they just tell you you don't want, they don't want treatment at all. And there's, we just separated out as there's another column where you could never get in contact with them again. So you don't know anything. And so when you drag those to those two columns, we are able to, and this is what we actually just, we just did this in May at a bunch of practices is we do run a drip campaign. So it's, we can run a report and it's all automatic and it sends out a custom text message and it depends on what you want. It's, you know, $500 off, like whatever the promotion is for yep. the month, it goes, it automatically collects them and it sends text messages and emails to all those patients with that. So that's when you could do that once a year, twice a year, three times a year. Also, if right now, if you, let's just say you just started using Practice Ascend, all of your, if you have a status, which a lot of people do something like treatment refused or long-term pending or whatever it mm -hmm. is, you, we can actually upload that into Practice Ascend to get all that data in there so that you're starting to use Practice Ascend now, let's just say we're six months in and you're like, okay, I, it's September, right? The classic time to run an ad uh, yep. or a campaign because it's slow. All of those mm -hmm. patients that are already in the practice management software, plus the patients in practice ascend who didn't start, but came in could get the promotional ads. So drip campaigns are automated. We do those when people tell us to, and yeah, it is a great way to just reach back out and see because again a lot of people they just maybe they just weren't ready for whatever reason but they just never told you and it's not where you want a custom follow-up with them because it's like oh i want to start in january it's like they just never contacted you again mm -hmm. and it's a way to just get those patients and see maybe they're maybe it was a cost thing right so now mm -hmm. you're running a special and they're like all right this is good like i could do this now and you get them back in yeah. So the drip campaigns are a huge part of this, which is obviously it is following up with them, but that's for patients who didn't end up starting. And right. I think it was, I believe it was Dr. Krieger who had mentioned this somewhere in like the orthopreneurs group, like uh, to go back and look at patients who came in and see if like their insurance was used, right? Because then you could see, did they start anywhere or is it me or did they just not start? And a lot of times they didn't start anywhere and they just mm. weren't ready and that's fine. Yep. And it gets back to make it easy for the patient, right? right. If maybe there's a reason why they didn't want to start, but they want to do it. It just wasn't the right time. And maybe reaching back out to them with something like that, where there's an incentive, maybe that gets them back in and they wanted to do it again. They came to you for orthodontics, right? Yeah, the drip campaigns have been really great. Yeah. yeah, and I just feel like this is, again, sometimes I personally feel like our industry are slow adapters <laughs> to what what is happening out there. We're just a little bit slower sometimes at bringing these in and being like, 
okay, it is okay to go after those patients. We, it isn't crossing any weird lines, but I, 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 it's a comfort thing. Yeah. I do feel like it's a comfort thing. Yeah. 100%. Because it's like, ah, that's, I don't know. It's, is that weird to do that? I totally, yeah. Because my dad, like I said, is practicing. So this was all new to him, mm -hmm. right? He never did like these drip campaigns and like doing all this stuff. And he's just, one, he's amazed that it, how it works because it does work. And then it's just, he was just like, I don't know. Like, he just never did that, right? In yeah. his career. If you, and even if you've been practicing for 10 or 15 years, and you're like on the younger side, it's still something new. Like you said, we're just slower to adapt to these things, even though we see it all the time. You get emails all the time. You, you put something in, you get promotions, no matter what it is. And I think that's what's really exciting to me is I love companies like yours where number one, I'm definitely a, I love a little bit more of the DIY, like where a practice can manage their own, not that there's anything like a lot of practices need big management yeah. marketing companies to manage it. They're just in a different place, especially for a lot of my startup docs or docs yeah. that are still getting going, or maybe they've just got a really great team in place with a really person that's got some real good, like where yeah. their team is solid and they're like, okay, I know they can manage this and I'm not having a lot of turnover where I'm constantly training and retraining and worrying right. about things falling through. I just feel like it just opens up one more door for us that I just don't feel like we have really thought about. I think we're really starting to focus on that contact into new patient. But I think yeah. there's, we still have, I think of that movie, Dumb and Dumber. So you're telling yeah. me I've got a chance. Mm -hmm. you yeah, know? <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. And, and that's yeah. what it is. That's what these yeah. drip campaigns, until they say absolutely not, or they, they shut us off and don't want us following right, up with exactly. them. I can tell you as a consumer, even, and I think everybody who's listening, if you were to be honest, there are probably products and things that you have purchased probably years after, but because of this kind of slow campaign oh. Oh, yeah. where things are like a touch, what do they say? It takes nine times of touches yeah. a lot of times before yeah. somebody makes a decision. So if yeah. we think about that and think, okay, if we think one phone call after somebody misses a, a, a new patient exam or doesn't show up is going to be enough for them to come back in or just right four full follow-up calls within the first month and then we they never hear from us again right. i just feel like there's a whole lot out there yeah. that's open to us if we've got the right tools in front of us to really manage it and i really feel like you guys are are on to something for yeah. sure here yeah no and it's we and it's customizable too if someone is wants to only follow up a certain amount of times or depending on the practice and obviously the, the the doctor's personality, like some people are okay, like being more aggressive with follow-ups. Mm -hmm. Some people want to give it more time. At our practice, actually, for just us, our treatment coordinator, like we turned off. So for the treatment coordinator aspect of it, we turned off the text message and e automatic emails a, a week later because we have just found that we like, I like our my treatment coordinators to, to call the patient. Mm -hmm. Because I just feel that if they get a text, they might ignore it or if they have a question. So that's like a big thing too. So if yeah. they have a question, I want them to, people still like getting a phone call from a person and maybe they will text instead. So our treatment coordinator can always like text and she'll say on the phone call, if she's leaving a voicemail, feel free to call or text me. Hmm. But you can customize, that's what's nice. You can customize it to like what your comfort level is, Yeah. but still doing follow-ups because it's so important for a practice. Yeah, I, so. I love it. I love how you have just taken an area in our industry that definitely has needed some help and, and made this into something pretty great. So I'm curious, as we're talking, a lot of this is driven on AI. Where do you think AI is taking us in the next few years <laughs> here in orthodontics? In the next few years, I really think things like the customization of really like the, a lot of the virtual monitoring stuff I think mm -hmm. is like really cool. And the way I think that will only get better. And again, it's not about just like never seeing the patient, but it's making their experience better. They're scanning. And again, I, I actually don't use any of them right now because I'm just still trying to figure out how we would implement it in our practice. Yep. But things like if a patient is having an issue, instead of somebody having to manually type it, the AI can maybe recognize that, ooh, that's a wire poking and like automatically generate 
either a video or something to help that patient at home, right? Yeah. Like things like that, like if you're using self-ligating brackets, like recognizes that a door is open, like patient doesn't need to come in for you to close the door. Like they might be able to do that themselves. And just like this automation of helping patients at home, obviously like with clear liners, whichever clear liner system you're using, I think it automatically does say there's an unseat and things like that. So that's like pretty cool. But I think maybe with braces, it'll get a little bit better and a little more hmm. just advanced with helping patients with that. And just really the whole like digital like workflow, like making that more automatic, like setups for like indirect bondings and things like that, like the, all that like 3D printed like braces and all that like customization and all that. And that's all like really cool. So that's, I see that all getting better in the next few years. I, I don't really see like a robot taking the place of like staff or anything yeah. like that anytime yeah. soon. Tushar, who's my business partner in this is really heavily knowledgeable in like robotics and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like, like that's an area that he's very interested in. And so I'll ask him things like that. Like how far away are we from that? And he's like, that's, that's not close. Like it's <laughs> talked about a lot. It's talked about, but the day where like you walk into an office and they're just like robots at the front, yeah. like that, you know, that's, that's a long time away, which I think is, that's good. But, but yeah, I just see the things that are out there just getting even better and more customizable and more just again, taking those mundane tasks and just automating them so that you have more time to actually interact with the patients and free up time to do the important things in a practice. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. This, this is, this has been great. And I'm wondering as we finish up here, if we've got some practices that are or docs that are listening and okay, I think that this is, this could be like a good first step for me for really taking a hold and getting control of my follow-ups and communication and maybe even thinking about drip campaigns and whatnot. First, I want to ask before I have you give us your information, mm -hmm. if there was like from an adapter standpoint, like two to three points where you're like, okay, this is what would help you if you were going to move in this direction, you were going to bring some on here would be like three things that I would tell you, get ready so that you can have the easiest move into bringing something like this. Do you have any suggestions there? Like to learn the system? No, just like, if a practice is telling their team, okay, I think we want to do this, but do they need to clean up their statuses first? Or do they need to have yeah. an understanding of what their follow-up process, what they want? Is there yeah. things that they could do to help get themselves ready if they were like, I want to do this and I want it to just take off for me? Are there any best practices for helping get yeah. them ready? So, yeah, definitely. Obviously cleaning up the statuses is a huge thing, right? So if you want to really use those like drip campaigns and everything, but if you're, if you just leave people in, you got to make sure the statuses are changed correctly in the software. So if patients are starting and then they're not being, they're still impending, but they've started, it could get a little, you don't want to send a, a promotion to a patient in braces or in, in like, clear liner treatment because they're going to be like, I'm What's already in here? it yeah. and can I get that money off? <laughs> and it's like, that, that, that's so definitely making sure that the front desk, because that, that is the thing. And that's important, like making sure the front desk is changing those statuses appropriately mm -hmm. or whoever changes those statuses in the office so that if you want to move forward with a drip campaign, we're not shooting ourselves in the foot by sending it to the yeah. wrong people. The the other thing is, yeah, if you're an orthodontist who's not necessarily comfortable with the idea of follow-ups, just try to get comfortable with it and think of what type of follow-up system you would feel comfortable with, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what I was saying during this, like the follow-up system we do in our practice is what we're comfortable with, right? So right. we do things a certain way, but I know people who when a patient leaves, they want to call the next day, three days, like, like a patient that they just saw, we go a little bit longer than that, only because it, we just feel like it's less pressure. But that's just our opinion, right? Mm -hmm. Think about how, especially if you've never done follow ups, what you would feel comfortable with, because we're, we, it obviously can't be like, oh, I want to follow up a month later, that's too long. Generally, we would recommend a week or less, just to like touch base with the patient. But just think about that. And the status thing that you said is that is big, right? Yeah. Because that's doing that will really help. You'll get the most out of like practice ascend if you're using all those features. Yeah. That's um, great. Trying to think of other things. Most offices now have email and all that. If you're 
front desk doesn't have an email or something. I know there are probably offices out there, which is fine that maybe don't have email and stuff. It's pretty important to have that set up just mm -hmm. because that's how this the system integrates with your whatever email you're working with. Other than that, like it's the software itself is really is easy to use. It's yeah. not like this is a big training to do it. It's pretty Perfect. straightforward. But yeah, those things would definitely be important. Okay. And yeah, yeah and, and it works for startup practices. If it's a busier practice, obviously it's always daunting to bring something into a busier practice because mm -hmm. it's something new, which is why we wanted to make it simple. Yep. And so there's, it's simple, but obviously if you're a startup practice and that, you know, if you could get the systems right from the beginning, it's way easier. The what systems, I'm always saying. Yeah. You no, know, I'm preaching to the choir here, but <laughs> if you get the systems when you're starting, like, and just have that vision of, okay, this is going to be a busy practice one day and just get those systems in place. And it is so much easier when you get busier to just have them in place and you're not, but that was actually one of the reasons why we wanted to make this really simple because there are a lot of busy practices that it's like, they don't have the follow-up in place. And this is a simple way to get that yeah. in place and going. Yeah. So. Well, that's, that's great. I love what you've done, you and Tushar, and I think that this is something that a lot of docs are really going to be excited that I did this podcast and be like, ah, oh, there's something out there. I think this is, I think this is exactly what I've been waiting for. So if somebody yeah. wants to get a hold of you, if they want to learn more about practices yeah. in, what's going to be the best way that they can do that? So the easiest way would just be the email. So it's contact us at practiceascend.io. So you can email us, definitely let us know if you heard us on the podcast, because for all of your listeners, we're actually, we do healthcare forms. When a patient starts, when you put it into, again, this is like that automation thing. So there's, there is more automation in there. I, I could just keep talking for five <laughs> hours on this, but one of the other automated things is when you put a patient to consult scheduled, they automatically get a text message and an email for a health form, which is very mobile friendly when they fill it out comes back to your email and a printable PDF, but we will give it to anybody who's listening at no cost for oh, thank you. the lifetime that they're here. So yeah, that's just great. a little something, but yeah, so you can contact us there and we would be more than happy to actually show you what it looks like and go through more details and other things that it can do and ways to use it. Yeah, that's great. And, and we'll also have in the show notes, like the website and all of that, if somebody wants to hop yeah. on the website and see everything. Yeah. So this has been great, Mike, just having you talk through this again. I think this is a great product and a lot of docs are going to be like, okay, this is exactly what yeah. I've been looking for. So as I finish up here, I, I know you know this, but on Hey Docs, I love to finish up with a speed yes. round. So are you ready for the challenge? Yes, I think so. <laughs> I hope so. All right, here we go. If you could start any business right now, what would it be? Uh, it, would, it would probably practice Ascend, which is why I'm doing it. I, I really do. Obviously, like I said, Tushar, it comes from a technology background. So I really love learning more about that because it's something that I know what I want to do, but like seeing how that vision comes to life within the yeah. technology itself is really awesome. So I'm, I'm going to go with that. Okay, sounds good. All right. The best investment you've ever made? My education. That's an easy one. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. That's uh, how, an easy one. <laughs> how do you handle work-related stress? I, I'm actually pretty good at leaving work at work. I just like coming home, hanging out with my family and the kids. That's a pretty good distraction. And also, <laughs> I, I like to work out, so that also does help. Oh, that's great. Yeah. What's one trend in our industry that you're pretty excited about? We were talking about it a little bit before, but all like the cuts, the way that treatment is becoming more and more customized. It's, mm -hmm. I, I just think that's like very cool and very different than it's just like a cool thing that I think is really going to make the patient experience better. Cause as those things get advanced more treatment times are faster, better results and all that. And that's all awesome. It's just awesome. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. And the last one, most valuable piece of advice you would give someone just starting their career. If they're starting a practice, uh, like I said before, I would say, get the systems in place now. It might seem, yeah, but I just started, I have three patients. Like, do I really need this? You will get busier. Mm -hmm. It takes time. That's another thing. What they say always, Rome wasn't built in a day type of thing, but <laughs> be patient and, but just get those systems in place from yes. the beginning and you will You'll never know what it's like to not have any systems and have the chaos and then try to get those yes. systems in place. And that's a great thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I Work can... with a great consultant like Jill. Yeah, hey, there, thanks. there you go. <laughs> it's easy. That's yeah. Look, then you'll get the systems, right? It's important. <laughs> like I, I really would if it's, uh, 
if I was starting a practice like by myself and I just came out, I would apps I couldn't recommend it more. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thanks for saying yes. that. Mike, this has been just a treat having you on. Thank you so much. Thanks for bringing this to yeah. our industry. I think this is exactly yeah. what we need. And I know that probably a lot of light bulbs went on with a lot of my docs that are like, this is exactly what I've been looking for. So yes, um, I'm please. sure you're going to yeah. get a lot of calls. So thanks again well, for spending you. the day with me. Yes. And thank you so much for having me. Yep. All right. Till All next right. time. All right. Take care.